right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you do the interview, and mm -hmm. I'm curious, what what strategies now or techniques do you use to consistently engage in the quality content that you produce? Um, but before you get to that question, I want to I want to spend a minute on Costco. Not to promote them or anything, okay. but Costco is <laughs> is doing a great deal for you and some of the, you know your content that you put out. Can you share a little bit of light on that? Because mm -hmm. I know somebody's going to come across you and be like, oh, she's doing videos about Costco. Yes, she does a great job with it. So please tell the people what it's about and, and how you came to that point. Yeah, so I am the founder of a YouTube channel called D and Fam. And on my YouTube channel, I post videos twice a week and I help Canadians save time and money every time they're shopping at Costco. Um, I decided to go this route with Costco because when I was searching as a viewer for information on Costco Canada and all the sales going on, I kept getting American sales. And if you know anything about the price difference, the product differences <laughs> it is very disappointing to get in your car get all the way there and you're like they have nothing of what i saw like absolutely nothing and the things that they do have is about twice the price yeah. and i like i came here expecting something and I, and i was disappointed and so um i kept thinking like maybe someone should like start making this more accessible mm -hmm. and then so i sat on it and i was waiting it to become more accessible and it wasn't uh, and it is available on social media but I'm not social media obsessed mm -hmm. right I'm more search obsessed I'm more what can I have and have data that I can track and figure out like what I'm doing right what I'm doing wrong mm -hmm. and for me SEO search that's what drives me it's not follower count or how many views I get on a post or, you know, anything like that. Um, I like to consider myself as like the laid back type, mm -hmm. right? So you won't catch me doing a dance on Instagram <laughs> try to get Why you know, not? Just views, do a dance in Costco. You know, <laughs> I might just go to Costco and say and buy something and be like, you won't believe how much I saved. <laughs> and like, that's what I'll do. <laughs> what I'll do to drive engagement because I want people to know like I'm excited that I got this thing that I might not have needed but I saved so much getting it yeah. um, and so it was that it was also at the time that I started that direction of my channel it was in a time where everyone was so secluded right mm. like times are scary no one can go outside um, and going shopping was actually very stressful mm. because you didn't know what would be on the shelves. And right. this is like real life. What we were, I remember waiting two hours to get into a grocery store, yeah. right? In the cold in Canada for everyone listening outside of Canada. <laughs> like this is, you got to be committed to spend two hours in the Canadian cold for groceries. That's double the price of everywhere else in the world. Okay. But and so, um, during that time I spent, <laughs> What did you want to say? <laughs> I can tell you're laughing. <laughs> because I wanted but to throw this in there. I wanted to throw this in there. For those outside of Canada, the, the grocery store you're describing looks like an igloo. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? That's what it felt like. Because the lines were wrapped around the grocery stores on the outside. People were watching everyone's shop car shopping carts like... Did they buy the last roll? Because yep. I need toilet paper, too. <laughs> uh, times were, you know, it was like survival of the fittest. Yeah. And I remember having a lot of enjoyment talking to my family and friends and saying, like, hey, what'd you get at the store, mm. right? And it became this phone conversation that made everyone happy. And so I wanted to do that on a bigger scale. Mm. But I didn't want to do it just to do it. I wanted to give value. Mm. And that value I found was just finding ways to save people time because I also heard from my viewers that they were so frustrated that they went out and like what they wanted wasn't there. It's like a waste of gas, a waste of their time, waste of their mood, like just everything. And, and then I said, well, what if I don't just save them time? What if I find ways to like watch things and save people money? And then my viewers would leave comments like D I, I saved 
like three hundred dollars mm. because you told me something I bought last week was on sale. I went back and they actually gave me back the three hundred dollars wow. plus tax, and I'm like, yes, wow. yes, like I'm happy <laughs> for you. And then so that genuine excitement. I mean, wouldn't you be happy for well, someone for who sure. came to you and was like, listen, I got I got three hundred dollars back on my seven hundred dollar purchase. Right? Like everyone wants to know now how did you how did you do it? Yeah. And so those conversations uh, became more frequent, and then it just became obvious that that needed to be my mission. Mm. Um, and then from there, that's when everything took off. It was it was my genuine desire to help people without asking for anything else in return, except for a, a like and a subscribe. <laughs> yeah, that's it's um, it's really simple. You know, that's, but it helps. That's it. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Uh, but then I also had to learn that I had to start asking people to support me. Yeah. Because I also was in that mindset where, like, if I just keep posting what they like, they'll just keep showing up. Mm -hmm. um, but I was seeing numbers like 50,000 people were seeing my videos, but only like a couple hundred or like a couple thousand were, were watching or subscribing. And I'm like... Ugh. I'm going how through do that. I, <laughs> yeah, it's like, how, how do I get those folks, all 50,000 of them that keep coming back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how do I get them to switch over? And then all I did was just have that call to action, right? Like say, mm. hey, if you subscribe, it helps me grow. Yeah, yeah. That's it. And then they were like, oh, that, that's what that button does. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, yes, the red one. Right? And then YouTube goes and changes it to black and white. And right. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> the red was working, you know? <laughs> yeah. Now it's like, what do I say? Like, press the white red? I'm just like, hit the subscribe button. Okay, the one that says to subscribe. Just press that one because it's no longer red, people. It's right. no longer red. Right. Um, but it's also being able to adapt to all those changes, right? Because you get into this habit of knowing what to say yeah. and how everything's going to go. And then one day you wake up and yeah. everything everything looks, looks a little different. And yeah. you have to figure out, like, what happened while you were sleeping. Um, and so I've, I've had to figure all that out the hard way, but you know, there is no better way than the hard way because for each success that I have now, each level of success, I am so appreciative of it. It's like, I don't look at it and say like, Oh, that's cool. 